Did you guys know that you can now do alignments with Infusion 360? Turns out you could always do this, and I've just figured out a way to do it so that you can have absolute control uh, for each alignment without losing your work. Check it out. Hi guys. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how to set up an alignment template inside of Fusion 360, completing the work once together so that you can then recycle the dials and knobs that you can then implement throughout your patient workflows. It's been a while since I've posted and I came across this issue the other day while working with one of the technicians I uh, converse regularly with and a good friend of mine. Uh, they're having issues with alignments and benchtop alignments um, and when to do it and how to do it can be challenging and you know being able to put some dials and knobs in together for yourself to be able to easily uh, you know correct a sagittal or a coronal angle uh, on the fly even between iterations it's just going to save you a lot of headache and time especially when it's again built into a template that you can again simply reuse so Let's say we're using the traditional ONP Digital Designer workflow, wherein we have a template we're starting from. We just simply need to bring in a corrected and aligned uh, mesh to be quickly converted into a lofted uh, socket for the distal end here, which is sort of an open surface ready to receive that loft. You know, we're hopefully going to do a cycle refresh of 10 minutes. And uh, we, we also want to build in now this alignment feature that we've been talking about. Um, so... You know, in this uh, initial template here, you know, I've got my pylon assembly, I've got the distal um, terminal device if needed, and I also have in the root, you know, my quad mesh, which has been brought in on the origin as I aligned it earlier using one of my favorite mesh programs, and we're ready to do the next step. So if you're in a similar position, a great way to set up an alignment is to actually start off by going to your modify parameters uh, option, and this is where we can go and we can add um, user-based parameters. So these parameters uh, can be something as simple as, you know, the offset. This could be the coronal offset. And then that's a millimeter expression. And we're going to give that an expression of, let's say, 5, just to start. It's great to have these um, not be 0 when you set them up. Um, another user parameter would be the sagittal offset. Um, you could also maybe call this the AP offset or the ML offset. I'm going to give this another uh, one of four. Um, let's do the sagittal angle next. So if we wanted to do a sagittal uh, angle correction, so this is going to call the sagittal angle. This is going to be a different type of unit, right? This is actually going to be a degree. And let's enter an expression of five, again, to something that isn't zero to start. Uh, let's do another one for the coronal angle. And this is gonna be, again, in the uh, degree count, let's give this a degree of four. And then finally, we can actually do one as well for the global reduction. And this should just be a regular real number. Um, da, 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 da. Can we do that? No units, enter expression. You know, this is gonna be zero point uh nine six let's say so that's a around a four percent reduction uh we'll have that available to see if we can use it but these are sort of and then we also have the into and outto angle of course so um so let's call this into outto angle and then we're going to do a degree for that and an expression of three so there's our four user-based parameters and we will be able to call upon these as we now start to build out the smart sketch which will allow us to give ourselves those handles of control. So closing our parameters window now, we have a bunch of user-based parameters ready. Let's create our alignment within a new component, my favorite first step of any workflow. We're going to call this, you know, socket alignment. Uh, socket aligned or something similar. Put that together. And in this um, new component, let's turn on the origin. Let's turn off the origin of our root and let's hide the bodies of our root. And uh, we might even want to hide some of these other ones just to get them out of the way. Let's create a new sketch. Create a sketch on the top plane. And on this sketch, we are going to be placing a line just off to the side. This line should be horizontal vertical. And one of these points is going to be our um, origin point for our incoming socket. So... This is an offset, right? So if I take uh, this 
dot and I dimension it with the D key. So holding, hitting D in our keyboard, going between the origin and uh, the first dot here. This is going to be, I believe, uh, the coronal offset. So if I type in coronal offset, coronal offset of five, there it is. We've now programmed our first handle. If I hit D on my keyboard again and do this direction, we have the sagittal offset of four. So there is um, our first program sketch. And if we hit finish sketch now, we have uh, a new intended dot for our origin as well as a line coming off of it. This line is going to be what we construct a plane on in our next step. So a plane at angle is what we're gonna be constructing on the line coming from that new origin. And right there, uh, we can now put in that angle we're looking for. So I'm looking at it from the front right now, and which means that any direction going back and forth is a coronal angle. So typing in coronal angle gives me that five degree tilt. Fantastic. On this new coronally angled plane, let's make a new sketch. We're going to hit P on our keyboard to project that initial origin that we made and hit L on our keyboard. Let's do another line going uh, horizontally vertical on, down the other way, just like that. If I hit finish sketch now, we're going to do one more plane at an angle, and this is going to be our sagittal angle. But notice how it comes in at a 90 degree angle. So we actually have to do 90 degrees. So the angle is going to be 90 plus sagittal angle of five degrees. Hit OK. We now have the sagittal angle oriented. The last thing we got to do is create a sketch on this uh, a lot plane again and hit P in our keyboard to project that initial origin we made and then we're just going to draw a circle hitting C on our keyboard. This circle is completely uh, not uh, going to affect any geometry. It's just there to help us place a joint. Uh, being able to call upon this circle is going to make it really easy to do so. If we hit finish sketch now, we should have uh, a, you know off to the side angled you know in two different directions uh, you know circle. So in our sketches now, we can actually remove two of these and just have this as the remaining um, circle point. And let's test this out. You know, if we want to bring back uh, something in the background just for perspective here. You know, if I want to make this bigger so I can see it. Let's see what happens if we go back to our parameters window and we start adjusting these. We just got to confirm that this is working. So looking at it from the front, right? Let's look at it, and if we change our coronal angle to 6 degrees, I can see that circle has moved. Do something really strong, like 12. There we go. If we want to go negative 12, we will be going in the opposite direction. Nice and easy. Uh, sagittal angle next, uh, 5 degrees, currently tilted. What happens if I go uh, negative 8? Negative 8. There it is. Tilted over. And let's try doing some of our offsets next. The coronal offset... Can we make this eight? There we go. How about the sagittal offset? Can I make it negative six? And there it is going ahead of the origin. So there we have it, guys. This is a, a great way to sort of dial in each of these handles. We now only need to now consider the, the reduction and the into as sort of our final step, right? So uh, these are all great. Um, the one thing to I found out about this is that you can't really put these at zero. Otherwise, some weird things happen. Don't ask me why it can't do zero, but... Um, the offsets are okay at zero. The rotations are not. The rota if you put it at zero, it tends to completely do a 180 and flip. It gets a little confused. So um, if we're doing this for uh, the next step, the next step essentially is I want to reset. Actually, no, I take that back. Um, the next step is we're going to be doing one more thing. So 25, just do something really obtuse off to the side here so we can clearly see where this alignment is and, and snap to it in our next step. So we've done this. We've proven it works. Next step is to make a new component. We're making this component within the component we're currently working on. So if we do that and we make a new component, uh, wow, I can't reach that for some reason. New component, let's put it here. New component inside the component. We're gonna actually call this the socket itself. And now we've made a socket uh, sub assembly. You know, it's, it's a component within a component. Um, that came in grounded, so I had to right-click and unground it so that we can move it around. And if I go to the top-level assembly here, you know, we have a component that's sitting on top. I'll hide the origin of this one. 
I should be able to move this. Um, but this component now, we need to create a joint, a joint to our sketch. So creating a joint in the assemblies tab is pretty easy. We go here and we first select our origin point of this sub uh, component. And again, we're inside the, you know, the new root of this sub assembly. We're not in the socket. So in the root of this assembly, we're going to select a joint here. Now we're going to select a joint here and they're going to match and marry very nicely in relation to the circle. One final thing for connecting this component to the sketch is that you got to make sure that the angle we set, uh, if it had an angle, um, 180 degrees is what mine had, make sure you add the plus into angle here. And this is where we're going to get that degree change when we go to do our alignment for the into. Now that we've done that, we now have a container or a component that will carry its alignment through uh, a parametric timeline, right? So we put it off to the side so we could easily identify what we were selecting. Putting that on top of another origin just makes this a nightmare. So now that we've done that, let's reset this to zero, which is what I was doing earlier. So zero and zero, and I'm going to do 0 0.001 for these. Um, so control C, just go to tab, paste, uh, global reduction. We're going to leave and this, we're going to leave for a second and hit okay. So this is essentially dead on right in the center. Notice how it's flipped upside down. Um, that is probably going to be an issue. Can I change that in my joints here on joints? If I flip this, there we go. Bringing Z back to the upright position. Um, yeah, sometimes it flips around. So we just got to be careful of that. Now we are ready. We are ready to do our alignment. So inside, we're now going to hop into this uh, component called the socket. And, you know, we're now inside this. And, you know, let's bring back our body from the root assembly. And we're, let's make that into a form inside our component that we've just done. So we're going to convert this to the quad mesh. We're going to hit OK. That quad mesh is now turned into a spline body inside that container. So we can hide the initial mesh body. And uh, from here, we are ready to, uh, you know, go to the next step. So you, typically, we will loft down to this and do a quick thicken. So, you know, let's thicken this to our uh, desired thickness. So maybe not 54, four millimeters, um, four millimeters. And I'm just going to keep a sharp edge on the top for now and hit OK. We now have a completed body. And now it's up to me to turn uh, to delete what I want to loft. So I'm going to delete that string and then I'm going to delete the next string below it. Hit delete. And then these two bodies here, we can double tap and just delete. We exposing two open edges, right? And so what we need to now loft these to that open uh, template below. So if I go match uh, now, that piece blind uh, edge is going to now be matched to our CAD template. And to do this effectively, we need to make sure associative is selected. Now, this is a super cool um, a thing that I've only recently come to terms with how to use properly. Uh, essentially, if you turn on associative, we can change everything and this loft will remember where to go, which is really nice. So that's done. And uh, maybe, you know, let's hit OK. And I got to do the same on the inside. Probably should have done the inside first, but it'd been slightly easier to see. But same thing, we're going to go match this with associative turned on to that inside edge of our CAD template, bringing that down and hitting OK. And we now have this loft done. Uh, to the bottom, right? So we finish our form. And uh, can I select this? I hopefully can. So we just need now to loft and stitch this surface to this surface. If we can't select that surface, it's because I have to just unbreak the link. Include subcomponents. Okay, so now we should be able to stitch this to this. There we go. Creating a nice body inside of our subcomponent. That's great. Uh, we can quickly do a uh, fillet around this. If I do 50, there we go. Fill it on the bottom and hit OK. It can do another fillet on the top. So if this was four, I need less than half the thickness. So 1.8 millimeter round. And bam, we have ourselves, uh, you know, a nice, well-rounded socket with uh, some rounded edges and, uh, you know, reduced points. And we're, you know, we're, we're, we're happy, right? So say we get this printed and uh, all of this, all of a sudden it comes back and there's something incorrect and we need to adjust the alignment. 
this is where our template comes in. Because in the future now, any socket you build, you would build inside this subcomponent. You wouldn't build it in the root. You wouldn't build it in its own assembly. You would actually build it within the subcomponent. So by setting up this system, this subassembly, we're now able to go in and dial our parameters for the alignment and the loft and everything will associate an update. Let's take a look and test this out. So coronal offset, let's put that out at five millimeters. There it goes. Let's do the sagittal offset at four millimeters. There it came forward. If we wanted it to go back, we could go negative four millimeters. There it is. Let's do the coronal angle at five degrees. There we go. And we could do uh, the next one, the into auto angle. Let's try that at five degrees. There it is, five. And then if we wanted that to go negative again, we could go negative in integer. And there you have it. It's that easy and nifty to be able to do this on the fly. Sometimes your lofts may break, so you gotta maybe have to go back in and adjust that if you wanna get something pretty extreme. But other than that, you should be able to do, you know, quarter inch, half inch um, movements uh, on the fly after the work's been done, after the print's been tested, and you need to go in and adjust this. It's that easy. Why would you want to do the alignment like this? Well, it's because your mounting point will always stay the same. If your mounting point always stays the same, you can incorporate the alignment directly in without having to do something crazy at the uh, assembly level in order to compensate for uh, a distal end which isn't moving or changing when you want to do an update. This gives you predictability in mounting, particularly if you're designing a cover. The cover that could potentially go from this foot shell to this area here wouldn't have to change too much, if at all, if you were in considering the mounting area um, of this distal end and using that as the marker rather than uh, the rest of the device, right? So uh, by putting all of that together, it was that easy to be able to create a template. Now, if I had saved this um, in the future, we would come back to this template and simply build our, our socket inside this sub component of this uh, component inside our root assembly. Uh, so a little bit of extra setup involved, but once it's there, guys, this is really powerful. Uh, this gives you a good overview and readouts and even exports for what you're doing at a very granular level. Uh, so I hope this helped. Um, make sure to subscribe, check out the content, the training for this, at these workflows and uh, how we get to this point together as a, as a digital designer can be found at the ONP Digital Designer Academy. Definitely sign up, book my time, do a discovery call and see how these workflows can help you and your clinic get into 3D printing for 90% less cost than traditional ONP software. Thanks guys for sticking around and I'll see you guys in another video.